All right, in this part two video, we're going to manually enable secret detection in a Spring Boot project. Let's get started. We're still hanging out here in secret detection, which is this tab right here. We're going to do this the hard way, which is editing the GitLab CI YAML file manually. In this method, it requires you to manually edit your GitLab CI YAML file. Use this method if your GitLab CI CD configuration file is complex. And most people who have an existing pipeline of some sort probably have a fairly complex pipeline and want to manually add this template file here to that pipeline. Let me show you what an existing pipeline might look like. So if I go to my project overview, this is a getting started with GitLab application security the hard way demo Spring Boot project. So this is nothing more than our Spring Boot template demo project imported, and then a hello world style pipeline added to this project. So this pipeline has a bunch of comments which we are going to ignore. It has three stages, a build, test, and deploy stage. The build stage, as you can see, just echoes some things to a screen. The unit test job echoes a few things and sleeps for about one minute, 60 seconds. There's some linting, which is nothing more than a bunch of echoes with a 10 second sleep, and some kind of a deploy job, which is, again, nothing more than a bunch of echoes echoing out to the screen. All right, to modify this, I'm going to edit in my pipeline editor because the GitLab pipeline editor has a built-in linting functionality that you see right here at the top. You can see right now my pipeline syntax is correct. So if I make a typo or I goof up my pipeline in some way, this dialog right here will tell me. I like to simply go to the bottom of my GitLab uh, CI YAML file. I want to position my cursor at the beginning of the line and I'm going to flip back over to my doc. I'm going to use a little copy clipboard in the middle of the screen to copy this stuff to my clipboard. And I'm just going to simply paste that include colon and this template section into my gitlab-ci yaml file now if i already have includes i would probably get rid of the word include and just simply add this template line into my other included templates in my lab ci yaml file before i commit this i'm going to scroll back up to the top and i'm going to see that our real-time linting has seen my change and that the pipeline syntax is still correct. So I have high confidence that I know that this pipeline is going to run. I'm going to change my commit message to add secret detection to pipeline and go ahead and commit these changes right to my master branch. That will kick off a GitLab CICD pipeline. And while that's running, I want to show you two pipelines that have run on this project so far. If I go over to the little rocket ship and I click pipelines, we can see the one that I just triggered, adding secret detection to pipeline. That's running. Let's come back to that. First, there's this Hello World Spring Boot template that had ran five minutes ago and is already passed. I'm going to click the past so I can show you what the pipeline looked like before I modified it just a moment ago. You can see there are three stages, a build stage, a test stage, and a deploy stage. I want to specifically call out this test stage here. You'll notice that in the test stage, I have a linting test job and a unit test job. Again, those were nothing more than just little echoes to the screen and a few sleeps. But you'll notice there is no secret detection job in the old pipeline that ran five minutes ago. Let's go over to our pipeline that's hopefully finished running for the changes of adding secret detection to our new pipeline. We can see the pipeline is still running. But this pipeline in the test section has this new job called secret detection. And I can click the secret detection job to see the actual raw log output of the secret detection. No surprises here. I didn't commit any secrets to this repository, this project. And so there are no leaks found. All right. So that brings up several rational questions, two in particular. First, what if I don't like copying and pasting code out of GitLab's documentation, or maybe the documentation's out of date, and I want to use something natively within GitLab to include that template file? I, we can certainly talk about that for a moment. I'll show you that. And secondly, how do I know secret detection is actually working? We should probably do a demo testing me committing a secret to a feature branch. 
First things first, if I wanted to not use GitLab's documentation here, or maybe the documentation simply out of date, we could do the same set of steps that we used in the easy way video in the first part. That would be the enabling secret detection by clicking on the web interface in settings for security, creating that merge request, but, in, but not merging the merge request in, and instead looking at the merge request, we could see the branch that was automatically created for us with the changes that the automatic easy way that we did in the first video made to our pipeline. So if you don't want to use our documentation, you could certainly do that. You could also use the pipeline editor that we saw just a few moments ago, hiding out here under code repository. Click on my GitLab CI YAML file. I'm going to open this up again in the pipeline editor. We also have a series of templates that allow you to add this secret detection template as an include as part of a standard GitLab template. And you can dig through the templates to see that. So you're welcome to not have to use our documentation if you don't want to. You can certainly use the stuff built into your version of GitLab to enable secrets detection. Number two, how do we know secret detection is working? Well, why don't we do a demonstration of secret detection in action? And one of the ways we can do that is first, I want to make sure that adding secret detection to pipeline job has passed and it did one minute ago. So we have secret detection active here inside of this particular project. So first I'm going to need a secret to commit. So let's go find a secret in GitLab. If I click my profile picture and edit my profile, if I scroll down here to access tokens, I can create a secret that I probably should never commit to a repository or project. I'm going to click add a new token. I'm going to call it Matt. My token is named Matt purposely commits a secret for a demo and we'll make it expire tomorrow. I'm going to give it pretty minimal access. I'll allow this token to create a runner. Pretty innocent, right? Create that token. I don't need to save that. We're going to copy that token to my clipboard. And voila, I have a secret that I can go and commit to a branch. So let's go create a branch to commit that secret to. Back here in my project, I'll click the overview. I can go under code branches and go ahead and create a new branch off of the master branch. That commits a secret created from the master branch. Let's create that branch. All right, great. I'm going to create a new file. Bloop. And I'm going to call it Matt commits a secret.txt. So here I created a text file with nothing more than a bash like script of variable. And you can see here my GitLab personal access token or GLPAT dash and then whatever that just got created for me. That should be picked up by our secret scanner. No problem. I'm going to go ahead and commit this to my branch. Matt commits a secret branch. All right. Because I made a commit, the default in GitLab is to run a pipeline. I want to see the results of that pipeline over here in a merge request. So I'm going to create a merge request so that we can see the results of that token or secret being detected. You can see that my pipeline is running. You can see that my pipeline is running. All right, you can see that my All right, you can see that my pipeline has finished running and has passed. However, in the merge request right here, I can see that the security scanning has detected one new potential vulnerability. One critical zero high and zero others. Let's click here for the full report. The severity of critical is GitLab personal access token was found in Matt commits a secret text has been identified by the git leaks rule ID. So because it because that text file had a git glab pat or gl pat dash and then some business, this has correctly detected 
that is a leaked secret. In fact, it tells me this is the name of the file, Matt commits a secret.txt, and it tells me what line I put the secret on. So in case I committed that secret to some giant pile of code, I committed it on line three. That's how easy it is to figure out how to manually enable secret detection and test it with a real secret to make sure it really is working before committing to master. Just in case we wanted to see this same output faster, perhaps while our pipeline is running, we can actually go back to our pipeline and see the job output of our new job. So I'm going to go back over to the little rocket ship build pipelines. I'm going to go to the commits a secret pipeline that passed and I'm gonna click on the secret detection job. Inside here, I see the full job log, and now I see a warning that there's at least one leak, one personal access token that was leaked and found by the scanner. This is a great way if you're a developer to quickly see in real time as a pipeline is still running, if you accidentally committed a password or some sort of a secret. So there's the first two things. The third logical question that a person might ask themselves is how can I automatically get that secret out of commission? In other words, how do I disable that personal access token in real time? We actually have a really handy GitLab doc on this and that's covered in the automatic response to leak secrets documentation. I'll read it briefly here just so that you know that it works or at least it's available. Get the automatic response to leak secrets this is available in Ultimate and all self-managed offerings as well. GitLab Secret Detection automatically responds when it finds certain types of leaked secrets, including what I just leaked, my personal access token. For automatic responses can automatically revoke a secret, notify the part partner that issued the secret, the partner that can remove the secret, notify its owner, or otherwise protect against abuse. In this case, I leaked my a GitLab personal access token, so there's no partner involved. It's on GitLab.com and I leaked my own token. Because I did this on GitLab.com, GitLab personal access tokens are immediately revoked the token and an email is sent to the owner of the token. That would be me. If I had leaked an Amazon Web Services IAM access key, it would automatically notify AWS and revoke that token. If I had leaked a Google Cloud service account key or API key or OAuth client secret, Google Cloud would have been notified automatically and that would have been revoked. And if I leak a Postman API key, we would notify Postman and then Postman would notify the key owner. All of these are available by default on GitLab.com, our software as a service offering. If I was running this on a self-managed instance and I leaked my own GitLab personal access token and on my GitLab self-managed instance, I was running GitLab 15.9 and later, it would automatically be revoked. Now, this little cog here has a special meaning. If you want the tokens to be for AWS, Google Cloud, GCP, and Postman to be revoked automatically, you can manually configure that using this link here on the token revocation API. And how to configure that is well beyond this part of the video, but at least here's the documentation on how you set up a relationship with those third party providers, those cloud providers or those other systems, so that when you leak a token, it can be automatically revoked. All right, that's it for secret detection. In the next part, we'll move on to the next part of application security with GitLab.